All right, this is Young Re. Welcome back to the Black Shift Group. So today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm actually having Girl Talk and Mimosas, and I got four of my great friends here with me. Um, and we're just gonna chop it up. So I'm actually gonna let them go around and introduce themselves so you guys can hear their voice. All right, my name is Brianna Roberts. You can follow me on Instagram and Snapchat at Brianna RW. Um, my name is Kaylin. I go by K Bay. You can follow me also at it's underscore K Bay. My name is Kendra Renee. I'm Kiana Chantel. That's with a C. C H A N T E L L. Kiana underscore Chantel. You know, it's a total of five of us, so I'm just gonna ask, you know, some questions just to kind of get the conversation started. And you know, just see wherever it takes us. Y'all already know in the black ship group. We have real conversations with real people and we just let it roll however it rolls. So what's the most crucial thing for a healthy relationship? Communication. Definitely communication because you can start a lot of pointless ass arguments just because somebody just missed the fact that, oh, I wasn't going to be here at a certain time. So right. Like, definitely communication is key because a lot of things can definitely be avoided if you just talk to each other. That is very true. Understanding. Yeah. Because even when you communicate and if y'all are <coughs> on the same level, if y'all not understanding each other's communication and you're going to bump heads, it's going to clash. So you got to know that we both seeing eye to eye. Um, in my previous relationships, uh, communication was not, it's like people ain't know what the heck it was. So <laughs> <laughs> we kind of had to go through the process of teaching them, uh, kind of showing them. Being patient uh, is a big thing for me. Um, being patient and being able to empathize because a lot of people don't have empathy. Empathy. A lot of people can't necessarily uh, always put themselves in your shoes to kind of see what you're going through. Me as a woman, as most women, mm -hmm. that one time you get the feeling like something isn't there. Your mind gonna go to 50 million places like, oh, oh yeah, my God, I know yeah. he was over there. Oh, I know he was this, this, that, and third. Like, trust is a major thing in relationships. So when you say... Um, so when you say trust, who's responsible for building the trust? When you're growing with somebody, you'll know what somebody doesn't like, what somebody Correct. does Correct. like. So it's nothing like where they should feel like it's not right at any mm -hmm. day. Like you don't want to feel like, for instance, if you have a specific schedule. Right. And you know that, okay, I usually talk to you this, this, that, and third about this. Mm -hmm. If I don't talk to you, I'll be like, okay. You want to say something, be like, okay, well, what's going on? But then once it starts to happen over and over and over again, like, okay, well, you what's start going on? So then it's like you speak on it. If it changes, then, you know, you try to work on it, speak on it, blah, blah, blah. But when it doesn't start to work out, it's like you can speak on it, but it doesn't work. That's when your trust starts to go like, okay, I think I trust him, but what's he doing? Then your mind starts to wonder. I agree. So when, then when your mind starts to wonder, then that's when that trust level starts to go and those walls start to build. I'm telling you, and for me, just being raw, so many walls. I got behind so many walls to the point I had to step back for myself mm -hmm. and start having a relationship with me. And I never could understand what that meant. Mm -hmm. People like, you gotta love yourself, you gotta love yourself. Okay, yeah, I love myself, but really, what does that what mean? What does that mean? It's more like, like you need to be in love with yourself. You lose so much. From the inside out and I've seen so much transition even within myself mm -hmm. and I don't know conceited or cocky type but I just feel it from the inside I feel it and I'm like okay I just gotta keep doing what I'm doing meditating in the morning prayer just a lot of different things just continuously like showing gratitude and just loving myself so that I could be the best once I get into a relationship and I can attract someone that has the same outlook on life as I do. I agree. Um, with my previous experiences in relationships, I was a duck. Because if you don't have that fundamental of loving yourself, if you don't have that just knowing of who you are and what you represent and what you really, really want out of a relationship, um, you will get into any and everything oh and try to make that jump work. That's okay. Real. That's <laughs> like, real. When you do like, not I, know, yeah. and you you'll settle. You'll be you never really took the time to say okay whether or not I wanted this. So I don't really like how it makes me feel, but I never really sat down with myself and, and had say, that conversation hey. and set those boundaries. And it come from childhood. It I does. Swear it come from it childhood. Does. It does. Like, like, what you said. I'm in that that place in my life where I'm just trying to find my wholeness, and then. Yes. 
um, a month ago, my father passed, and I never knew how much him being in, him being and not being in my life affected me. Um, but when he passed, it made me realize I was dating my darn daddy. Wow. So yes, I girl. Dad, but I gotta, everybody ready. I done cut everybody. I don't talk to nobody. Like, I got to figure myself out. And I feel like you can't be in a, a genuine, a pure, a happy relationship if you're not hold yourself. Right. So I'm working on that wholeness piece, and most people don't understand that. So it's like, I, I can't help that you settle in the relationship you in, but that's not the route I want to choose. Amen. So don't ask me what I got going on with this person or when I'm getting married. Just just know I'm working on myself. I'm right, right. The girl just got out of a relationship, and um, the sad thing is, is that I am committed. I am one of those people that is willing to... Do whatever needs to be done. They don't always do what needs to be done to please me. So then that, that mm-hmm. leaves me um, depleted, you know, looking for some type of fuel, looking for um, just some substance. You know what I'm saying? Like, I be running on E and I be crazy now. Oh, you're doing so good. But then it's time for me to get a reciprocation. I ain't got nothing for you. You know what I'm saying? But it's like you want me to bend it over you want me to do the little stuff thing you want me to cook for you you want me to watch your kids and it's like where is the reciprocation what when is it gonna come what back about around me? Like, yeah like what about me so um i know we talked about the uh like the self-love aspect um do you guys have anything that you do like on the regular just to like make sure like when you start to feel yourself like run out of self gas or whatever we want to call it what do y'all do to like fill yourself back up I take my time and do something for myself. Right. Sometimes you just got to do, like, have your own, like, me time with it. Take a bath, get your hair done, go get a pedicure. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just got to, like, block everybody else out. And yeah, just yeah. do you. As they say, do you, boo-boo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> go, go buy you something. Just, like, sometimes, I mean, yeah, they say money can't buy you happiness. And sometimes it don't have to be about, like. Sometimes it don't feel good. All right. It do. It feel like a child it in a toy right. store. It's because it's a, it's a pick-me-up. Because right. y'all notice when y'all go in the store and y'all pick something up. And you be like, ooh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And right. you get to that restaurant, you, ooh, I'm about to take this home. You know? So it's like, it's that pick-me-up. And it literally, like, replenishes you. Um, but y'all know me. I like to dig a little deeper. So other than, you know, your outer appearance things, what do y'all do? Do y'all like, like I know for me, for instance, I take my spiritual bath, um, roses, lavender, and I be putting, dumping the flowers in, in the tub. Yeah. It's a bit much to clean up. You can email me at theblackshipgroup at gmail.com and I'll send out uh, samples of the Yanni steam. I'll make sure that you get a sis bath with, you'll get a brochure. Um, to just explain the process and what you need to do. Anyway. Okay, so we got uh, spiritual baths. We got Yanni Steams going. So I started. It's been it's been trial and error, it's been trial and error. But I started like a morning routine where I get up at four thirty in the morning. Oh Lord, bless your heart. <laughs> bless it, girl. Bless it, girl. Because baby, at self talk. If you talking to me and I be talking back, we be going back and forth. <laughs> this thing, you know, it's not that serious. I started putting on motivational speakers. Okay. Somebody crunk, Les Brown. Oh my God. Girl. I listened to, I told myself I would listen to motivational speakers 85% of my day, every single day. That's been getting me, for, and, and positive affirmation. So I'm just letting it soak in while I'm getting up. And I'm, then at 5 a.m., I meditate for 20 minutes. Nothing that... Is anything that's not easy is worth having. Or right. y'all get what I'm trying to that's say. Oh yeah, that and is. I wanted something to fight for, and which was myself. I'm fighting for me. I'm fighting for my sanity. I'm fighting for being a better mother. I'm fighting for being able to one day have a good relationship to be successful. I don't want to work a nine to five. Take like discipline to get off of work. Like I commend Larisha, the black ship group. It's inspiring. It motivates me. Oh like God. and it takes discipline to go to work all day and still come home and create a business, create a movement, create something that's gonna inspire people. Yeah. So thank that, you. For real. I'm so serious. Yeah. I be at my breaking point. I be ready to quit. Girl. Yeah, thing, you know Girl. I'm going to just close stuff in the closet. I be about to be the baby at the baby daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I could break down if I, if I wasn't without this. I had to. 
I had to. My daughter at school called me almost every single day. And I said, and my daughter is too smart, that I need to discipline myself so that I could be an example to let her understand discipline is important. But anybody else want to chime in on their self-care regimens? I'm a daddy's girl, so I was always raised, if my daddy can't buy, or something my daddy can't do, which has never been nothing. Right. I don't need a man to do anything for me. Right. If my daddy can do it, what do I need you for? So I literally, I think I received one gift from a guy, and that was after we dated for eight years. Um, and it was my birthday. But other than that, I would never take anything from a man. Um, I I buy everything. I, ever since I started working, I do it all on my own. Um, so, no. But it's uh, shopping is an addiction. That is my, <laughs> so my thing is if you have an addiction, as long as a healthy addiction, as long as you support it, you can support it. Right. What's the problem with it? My addiction is not coming out your pocket, so right. I need you not say anything about it. Right. Yeah. You can tell me too many times, but you're not... I mean, Listen. let me see some money though, because until you help me, right? Until you help me, what can you say? What can you say? Okay, exactly. Okay, exactly. About right. somebody else's money, they who fucking right. not me? Thank no. you. Like right. no, baby. I thought right. my name was on it. Oh. But oh, y'all don't notice that, though, no, like, in the black community, it's like everybody be trying to watch everybody pocket. Yeah. Much. But it's like crabs black. in a barrel, and it's sad. It is. We live in a city full of crabs, unfortunately. Yeah. Everybody I mean, got it until you see them in person. And then nobody. It's I'm crazy how, amazed when I see people from Instagram and how y'all look in real life. Like, ooh. One, it's <laughs> crazy how one thing I have realized in this city that <laughs> can nobody come together to support somebody or is asking for a discount, drama. Y'all worried about the wrong they su they support drama, but they right. don't Right, y'all support, support drama. Y'all won't support success that's at all. That's overall, though. Just that's like, not just Jacksonville. That's everywhere. Yeah. That's well, why sad. do y'all think that? I don't know if it's the generation, Part the society. Part of me thinks it's deeper than that. Do you um, think it's more generational? Household. Culture, like our culture. Mm, speak, y'all. But we don't have a culture because we, it's been taken from us. Correct. And we were put against each other by entirely another race that used us against each other. That's why you have issues yeah. with light skin, dark skin. Yeah. That's why you have all of these types of issues. And it's just something that is generational that will carry on for years from now. And it's up to us individually to continue to come together like this and talk about it and speak on it. And that's definitely and it's absolutely it's gonna continue to go on. It definitely is. And I also choice. think it has to do with also households too, because you know the same way that we was raised ain't the same way. Like I used to get whoopings for bringing home bad grades up. Kids that's like thirteen and fourteen, and they dress in the same way somebody thirty three would be. Yeah. Like they. So what? What do y'all think is starting <laughs> that culture? Do you think it's the social media? Do you Most think definitely. it's, it's definitely that? social media? Like yeah. I definitely um, think it's everybody. It's probably, more exposure to things that exactly. you wouldn't normally see. Right. Exactly. Because one. Okay. Like for instance, my story. Um, I was basically a latchkey kid. My mom worked two jobs, so you know, getting the house by the time the, the, the lights like start. Um, but I still maintained being a child. Granted, my mom wasn't there, so I could have definitely been one of them girls. On the block with my hand on my hip, you can't tell me but what to so do. Strength, but it's like, um, my mom, like, she allowed us to maintain that childhood. You know what I'm saying? Like, we weren't, the internet wasn't that popular. It was dial up, so we right. weren't exposed <laughs> to that much. And it's like, even now, like, I'm 27. I just turned 27 in March. Some things still shock the hell out of me. Like, and I'm just like, dude, that's that's a thing. That's that's something that people do. And it's like, you can. These kids can search anything on Facebook, yeah. on Instagram, YouTube, the internet in general. You have literally a computer in your pocket. So everybody rush and get their kids' children. Make sure that you're monitoring that. Make sure that you put those parental uh, um, locks on there. Exactly. Make sure that you pay attention to who they're calling on your phone bill. Don't just get the unlimited because it's cheaper. Watch the numbers. Watch what's going in and out. Be aware of what your child's diet is. The diet is not just what they eat. Right which we're going to speak on that another yeah. time, but it's also what they're seeing with their eyes. Your eyes are camcorder. It's constantly recording, recording, re recording, you know, in your head. And it's just, it's manipulating your behavior and making you act based on what you see versus who you actually are. So just, you know, be mindful of that. I agree. My daughter's 15. She just got an Instagram. Just got one. Little Girl. Girl. She got you three pictures on there. The people need to know. Girl, you look good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So to keep it moving, y'all, y'all know I got to ask, you know, some of the questions that kind of make you go, hmm. 
So what lies do you most often tell yourself? Oh, everything's okay. Yeah. But is that a lot though? Sometimes. But yeah. in that moment, it's like when I'm feeling at my weakest, I'm feeling the most broken. I'm still telling myself everything's okay. So That's I, good. It is, but That's it's like perfect. I just came from the perspective of I won't face what's bothering me. I'll just say it's I'm okay. Happy with you it's saying. okay. So I never deal with what's going on. It gets to a point where it's even been times after years, I just completely break down because I never dealt with it when it happened. Um, I agree with what Kendra is saying because basically I wouldn't even necessarily consider that a lie. That's like a reprogramming. You know what I'm saying? That's like a, instead of me saying that, oh my God, there's so much going on, um, it's a reprogram. Um, like for instance, uh, Kendra's best friend, Brandy, um, I'm sad that she couldn't be here. Shout out for her. Hey girl. Hey, hey girl. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she put me on to, um, Count it all joy. Right? Yeah, count it all called? joy. I actually put, you know, I got to get my credit. I Absolutely. put on it. Okay. <laughs> so this is so the originator. Yeah. And then, you know, I just got it through the grapevine. Y'all know how that go. Um, but I heard it through the grapevine. Yeah. Hey. It's the thing that I do. I'm sorry. Um, but so I had a really, really rough week. And all I could just continue to say is count it all joy. And I got work to do. Um, they were both lies because I was mad as hell. Okay. Um, and I didn't have no work to do. But <laughs> I just kept telling myself I got work to do. And then words started showing up. I started sending out emails for interviews and those emails are getting responded to so then it's work to do i did this event i literally put this event together what maybe three days that created something for me to do so definitely keep yourself busy um keep those affirmations flowing and all of that um i don't always like to say this a lot sometimes i like to just call it a reprogramming i got a lot i think i told myself this the other day i'm going on a diet I'm really greedy. That's I, real though. I like. I really did. Like, I did have faith in it, and I think <laughs> the fact that I was, I had my boyfriend's words playing in my head before I started it. My boyfriend talked about some. I doubt you can put a, a whole a spoon or a fork in your mouth the whole day. You can go three days without eating. Like he goes, I like to eat. Uh, cause see, my in my previous relationships, they used to do that to me too. I bet you can't. I bet you right. can't. Work for you? Me personally, if I have a reason to stop, mm -hmm. then yes, I'll put my 110% in it. Right, right. But if it's something I'm just like dibbling, dabbling in, I'll be like, okay, I'm going to see if I can do it. If I can't do it, and eh, whatever. Right, right. But it's like, I just feel yeah. like it's just certain situations. In that situation, yes, I was like, okay, yes, I'm going to do that. Really, it was, I'm trying to fit into a bathing suit. So it's like me, I'm the type of person that. I don't know, maybe if it would be a lie or if it's just that, okay, it's like, okay, I, I messed this up. I'm going to try to go some something different. Okay, I get that. I get that. I know, like, okay, so, so for instance, I was looking for affirmations the other day, and this affirmation I came across, and that junk, it, like, shot me through the computer screen because it was like, what you do every day matters more than what you do once in a while. And I just felt like the computer, like, took a shot at me because I was like, I try. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like it took a shot at me pretending to the gym because I don't look. <laughs> I'm trying, okay? I'm trying. That's 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 it's the problem. We trying. But I hey, you that. can't be perfect in every aspect of your life. You got to take it step by step. Sometimes, it's a process like, sometimes, like, sometimes you got you got to work on the inside. You got to work here, like because I read something like, um, not verbatim. Don't quote me, but like willpower. Mm -hmm. Willpower, when you're um, focused on like more than one thing, one the your willpower lessens or it decreases in certain areas and it strengthens in different areas. So like when you strong, it's like right? multitasking. Yeah. yeah, like when you multitasking, one of those things not going aren't get. fully up to par. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I get that. I just, I, I don't know. It's like every since <clears throat> after I rehabilitated myself from the depression. It's like I try not to have excuses, you know, but at the same time, I know I'd be ready to quit. So, I mean, it's, it's just a process. So, I guess I'll just go ahead and move on to the next question. And this is actually the last question. So, after this, we can just kind of, you know, chop it up, end it up, or whatever. Um, but the last question is, um, what's the mo most important thing a person can do to improve themselves? Or what have you done that was, like, 
detrimental to you becoming the woman that you are today? Getting my credit scope up. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's a major like um the black as you know, as you guys know in the black shoe group, um mm-hmm. I do communicate with you know how that's going for me as the points go up as things drop off you know as my credit line increases um but it is a process it was um you know it's like in the black community we don't necessarily speak on finances like that so it's like you kind of really got to teach yourself to each his own um and then you tweak it based on whatever you've learned or whatever you taught yourself. Well, I know that, that was my personal experience. Have y'all had a personal, a different experience as far as money talks? I had to get a financial advisor. Oh, put Shout out that. to um, Carrier Williams, Northwestern Mutual. Okay. You yeah. might need to bring him on the show and chit chat with I'm us. I'm pretty sure he would love to. And I would love that. So yeah. I'm going to get his information after this. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Um, I'm my financial advisor is named Larisha Williams. <laughs> <laughs> like, everything I done tried, I done started from her. Guys, more of a background of what my what I was really looking like, right? So y'all know, boom, the depression hit. <laughs> y'all remember back in the day when niggas used to say boom, you knew they was lying. <laughs> 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 boom. So, <laughs> so, You know, boom. <laughs> that is coming back now, though. <laughs> you remember Facebook. that, right? Yeah, I'm seeing the word all on Facebook. Now. <laughs> with the, with so, the Obama. Yeah. So yeah, it was. Um, you know, my depression hit. Uh, ended up getting evicted. Ended up getting repossession. Cable cut off. Light cut off. Phone cut off. You know what I'm saying? Everything cut off and on your credit. Um, so I had to get it back together so you know of course you want to dispute whatever you can dispute you want to uh, pay whatever you can pay and then it was time for me to get secure credit cards i haven't given y'all an update lately but the last update is that i've actually had two credit line increases i'm working to you know get it up there right now i actually jumped last year this time i've jumped 120 points so uh, i've been i've been putting in work and you know a person who helps me a lot I don't even know if that was a question, but she said she said you. Yeah. <laughs> Brandy. Oh yeah, we gotta get home. She is, dude. Um she is um all about financial literacy. Mm-hmm. And Brandy, girl, listen. No, I'm her number two. Okay. Hey, okay, so Brandy, what if I do this? Then Brandy, okay, what so if listen, listen, what is it if I move it from here to here, what's gonna happen? Like, cause I don't know nothing, but I up until meeting her. It was Kendra got to figure it out herself. I've never yeah. had that financial conversation with my parents or anything. Um, so it like you said, it's just trial and error. Well, this didn't work, so let me try it this way. Yeah. Um, and I did it till I figured it out. And you know, I don't want to put my score out there because I don't need y'all trying to find me. Oh, girl. But listen, <laughs> I'm a one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> listen, Kendra is definitely doing her thing. It took a it okay. took a minute. It, it took a minute. Like, oh, oh. Then we thank God for growth. Listen, but you you know, you just, that's why you want to have a group of people. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm so grateful and I'm thankful for these young ladies that showed up for me today because, you know, I was having a rough time, you know, and I felt like um, I wasn't feeling supported. Y'all know I said that a couple episodes ago. So it's like them showing up for me and, you know, just committing. Like, that's a big thing to me. Uh, sticking to your word, that's a big thing to me because I tend to, I'm working on my self-love, so don't judge me. But I tend to, like, overextend myself, and I don't ever get fed back. So stuff like this is, like, amazing. I don't even celebrate Christmas, but they're definitely on the Christmas list now. So you know how that go. <laughs> so we spoke on our money aspect. So what is something personally? I want everybody to say one thing that they have worked on in 2018 that they know have made an improvement on the woman that they are today. And I have pride issues. So one thing that's worked for me is compromising. Yes. I, the opposite of Kendra, I did have my daddy in my life. So without me having my dad in my life, I knew never to depend on not now man, not mm-hmm. one and only. I don't need you to pay my phone bill, my light mm-hmm. bill. If you want, you can give me some food. You <laughs> can, you can, you can take me for that. But even if it came to you buying me an outfit, I never wanted you to do that because I always had it in my head where 
you want something from me. I'm not giving you my goodies. I'm not cooking for you. You're not my man. I'm not doing none of that. So with my new, with the relationship that I'm in, I can't keep thinking like that because it gets me cussed out. <laughs> a lot like cause I'll be I have times where I'll be like trying to get all my bills in order and I'll be like oh well I don't have this I don't have this and I start to overthink and then he'll be like well why uh, are you trying to pay this attention like you don't have me here like yeah. me I'm the type of person that since we get paid every other week if right. it's a check that's a, maybe a week or two before before the first that's gonna be my rent check regardless to Absolutely. how it is like that's when I get paid. My half of the rent is going to be there. I don't want your money. Like, I don't want it. But he'll catch me with, like, I don't want you going broke, this, this, that, and the third. So, me, I have to learn where to compromise, where I can put my little pride aside to be like, okay, well, fine. I'll let you pay this. And then when I get this back, I'll do that. So, I don't have to be like, oh, well, how am I going to eat today since I got, I mean, I have money, but I got to, like, mind say I'm like, I'm broke. I saved, I left all my cards at home, so. Then you know that I have to work on compromise. So. That's so good. We got it for number one. Let's do a little clap for her man. Okay. 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 But him to say, I got you, girl. Okay. Yeah, I want to know what it feels like. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you. You know what I'm saying? So who next? Working on my wholeness. I, the, yeah, the best thing I could have ever done was realize that I don't have it all together. And from yes. that point, I've been able to work on myself. And with working on myself, it's been a, I, I got to step back from you and I got to step back from you too. Don't take it offensively. If you do, that's fine too. But I got to figure out Kendra. Mm -hmm. um, and that and realizing that comfort is my biggest enemy. Like as, as long as I'm getting being comfortable, I'm not being successful. Um, those two aspects of 2018 has done miraculous things in my life. Yes, I love that too. Clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. All right, who next? I'll go. One thing I've been working on a lot this year is putting myself first. Yes, I was that's a big so thing. committed in my relationship with my child's father mm -hmm. that I lost myself. So I have to learn to find what Brianna likes, find things that me and Kylie can do together, learn to be just us, where mm -hmm. I don't need nobody else. And that was so hard. But, yeah, but you did it. Yeah, but I did, did it. it. You, you did, did it, girl. And it feels great, don't it? Yeah. I know it feels good because that's y'all building that bond. That mother-daughter bond is detrimental, okay? And the fact that you recognize, you know what I'm saying, that you were in error. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. I wouldn't even say necessarily in error, but you knew that you wanted to level up. And the fact that you put forth that effort and made it happen, that's a major thing. So definitely clap it up, clap it up. Hey. All right, Kiana, you in the hot seat. But I'm going to go ahead and admit it. Um, but being so negative, mm -hmm. being um, looking at everybody like they against me. Because mm -hmm. I grew up without both of my parents. And I had my grandmother, and she was, she was like my mom. But I was put in unfamiliar place where I didn't have anyone else but her to depend on and because I was from up north I had an accent when I came down south at three years old all the way to middle school mm. so I got picked on yeah bullied and I got hard I started learning to be more defensive yeah I was I got mean and I had I've always had a soft heart yeah. but it just turned me it turned me mean it turned me negative it turned me hateful it turned me seeing this and seeing that and just being defensive a lot. So that's something that I work on. That is good. That is oh good. my God. That's a major thing because right. that's from that's from your childhood and the fact that I mean you grown with your own kids now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And for you to recognize that dang, they still got a grip on me. But it's Girl. like once you like you start to realizing that you start to think on that positive path. It's like you feel that weight lifted off your shoulder. Yeah, it's like hear it negativity. Negativity yes, is that yeah. thing that will hold you down. I'm telling you. Most. I had to really come to terms. With like it even when it comes like myself. you going back towards it and you think negative. Just think of something like even if it was when you were younger. Something that made you smile. Like what was like the best Christmas or the best birthday you had. It's always like think yeah. of something that take you back to your happy place. Like, I even had to I tell my grandmother. Like I even had to because being raised by 
my grandmother from a different era. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she doesn't, her vision isn't like my, even as a child, I've always had a huge vision. Mm-hmm. Everything I wanted to do was bigger. It was always big, but I wasn't pushed and encouraged. I wasn't told, go for it. You could do whatever you want to do. You can have whatever you want to have. I was told, well, make sure you have a backup plan because everything ain't going to always work out how you want it to. Mm-hmm. And it stuck in my head from a child. I'll never forget it. And when I got older and my life wasn't where I wanted to be, I pointed the finger. I blamed mm-hmm. other people around me instead of taking responsibility for myself and changing it in the moment. And I didn't have a really good relationship with my grandmother too, even because of that. And I had to really sit back and I had to say my thank you for being a mother, for taking care of me when my parents wasn't there, for taking me out. Cause she, she did spoil me, I give her that. But she knew did what she knew. What she knew. You know yeah, what I'm and I think that that's, that's like a major thing in the black community. Um, they just a lot of time each generation is just working from what they know yeah you know and i mean i don't i don't want to fault i don't want to fault anyone but it, yeah, i mean it is at a time honest. where we need to um absolutely <laughs> it feels good like you know what i'm saying i'm gonna put a bookmark bookmark <laughs> you know what i'm saying bookmark i'm good for that but yeah with the black community they pretty much work from what they know um and they don't ever mean no harm that's what we really have to kind of like digest um, it's just that when you're miseducated and you're uninformed, you don't know no better. Yeah. Um, but I don't know if you guys heard Kiana when she said, damn, it feels good to get it off her chest. Um, you know, of course, I got to go ahead and advocate. Y'all already know y'all can stream us on Podbean, SoundCloud, as well as Google Play. And then y'all know we getting the vlogs going on YouTube. But that's the point of the Black Shift group. You know, because a lot of times, like, what she said gave me chills because that was me. You know what I'm saying? Like, my mom could only... Uh, Basically, because you know what I'm saying, like you come, you're a child, you're a seed, they plant you and then they have to grow you. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody don't have a green thumb, you know, but Damn, that's, that's, like that. that's how you got to look at it. You know what I'm saying? You you have kids, you got to provide for them. But a lot of time in the black community, hey, I you got a roof over your head, you got food to eat, you got clothes on your back. They don't ever think about the things that you say to your child. That, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like the 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 physical affection that you show to your child, your actual presence, things like that matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't just plant a seed and be like, okay, do your thing. I hope you grow. You got to water it. You know, you got to make sure it gets sunlight. Like, you have to really nurture it, you know? And I think that we're just so miseducated. We're so uninformed. And you, like, we get kicked out of the house early. Um, We get, you know, for instance, have your black backup plan. You know, we don't get told, well, do that thing. Do it. Just do it. Just do it. And keep going until, you know, you get some type of result. We don't get that because, I mean, I feel our parents know that, you know, the blocks are stacked against us. But I think maybe at a younger age, if they actually tell us, hey, this is why I'm telling you this versus just telling us that as a child and we just naively don't know. And then as we bring it into our adult life. Um, and then, you know, we may end up having kids and we may interact with somebody that has kids and we see that this is just not right. You know, this done in my growth. Look where I am. And I'm, I'm not fully happy. All of us here just said that we don't want to work for somebody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So think about if you were that 12 year old that said, Ma, let me get a lemonade stand. You know what I'm saying? And they fostered that. That taught you how to be an entrepreneur. So we just have to be mindful um, of that and you know I use the black ship group so that you can come get things off your chest because a lot of us our black experience is a lot alike you know and a lot of us did teach ourselves a lot of us did go out and find different mentors find different websites different things to like teach us what we mm-hmm. didn't know um, but it's about actually going back and teaching the previous generations um, as well as the younger generations because we all need to be in the know we all need to be aware all right, and I guess it's my turn to say what I'm doing in 2018 to make me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, <laughs> I know. Um, so for me, y'all already know I'm a Les Brown listener. Like I swear to God, like that's my uncle. Like if anybody you know know him, but tell him. him. I said, hey, hey, uncle. You know, invite me to a show. But anyway, <laughs> um, but um, he has this thing where he says you grow from people and projects. And y'all know I say that all the time, all the time, because that was the point of me creating the Black Ship Group. I was so comfortable with standing within my four walls in my room, you know, and not necessarily pushing myself 
outside of my limit. What I did today with these young ladies, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. And the craziest thing is that when I was getting everything set up with my mom's girlfriend, I was just like, oh, it's like a baby shower, but it's not a baby shower. And it's crazy for me to have that as my only reference point for women to get together. Yeah. Because in the black community, that doesn't exist. Or a gender reveal. It, right, or a gen, like the new thing is a gender reveal. But that was my reference point. Like, oh, you only get like the little sandwiches and the platter when somebody's pregnant and they could have a baby. So, you know, it's just getting out of my comfort zone. Being able to stand up for myself was a big thing. Um, and, you know, just stand sound on my square. That's something that I'm really learning this year to like just be sound in the decisions that I make. Y'all already know I'm going to cry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that. Ultimately, that's going to be my medicine. I'm going to cry. But then I'm going to push through after that cry because um, I was told a lot, you know, you don't need to cry. You don't need to show no emotion. That shows weakness. But y'all already know that's my superpower. And I keep saying that. I pretty much said it on like the last four episodes because find your superpower. Whatever people told you not to do. Whatever people told you that was a sign of weakness, um, whatever people told you um, that, you know, that's just not desirable, that may be your coping thing that you're naturally built in to have so that you can keep moving. Because y'all already know, check out the vlog on YouTube. I'm going to insert how my week went before this event. I cried every day, but I got my shit done every single day. So you said rewrite your own book. You sent it. Girl, y'all, I'm a bad boy. You poked me too hard. I just told you. I'm reading a bag book. Fiji. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, a, it's literally a book called For Highly Sensitive People, and I'm reading it. And mm -hmm. it said it's like 20 to 30% of the population are highly sensitive people. Yeah. And yeah. that's why, like, people outside, like, you so sensitive, you so this, because, like, 80% of people just aren't that sensitive. They not. Anymore. And that's. Oh, I think that's the reason why I'm so defensive because I am so sensitive. Yeah, and, and that's how when people is. tell you, like you said, don't cry, don't be sensitive. Yeah, so be, basically be strong, be strong, be strong. So now I'm tired of you telling me that, and I take it offensively. Yeah. So now I get defensive, and instead of showing my like, instead of crying, I'm a cuss. Right. Oh, absolutely. So, 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 okay, I'm gonna put my hands on you. People <laughs> are gifted. Like yeah. I'm in the book, I'm not done. I'm like halfway through, mm -hmm. but like. We're gifted people. Like, we see things when people be like, oh, you thinking about it too deep. No, you're not. No. Oh, I'm not thinking about it deep enough. Or when you... Oh, thank you. Exactly. Okay. Can or, I get that quotable? Say that again. You're not thinking about it deep enough. Okay. They can't Think go back into it. They, 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 they're not because 80% ain't like us. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, it just says that, like, we have unique powers, like, intuition. Like, we're the... We're the people behind everything. Like, we can see the details. We can see the little things. We can put the creative side together. That's yeah. why most people that are really sensitive are creators, are yeah. authors, writers, in music, or whatever, anything that is creative. You just make me feel so special about you. You are so welcome. No, girl, I yeah. mean, yeah. Everybody in this room is sensitive. But we all have pain. our meanness in us. Oh, like, absolutely. Oh, yeah. we oh, are I, think, I honestly think the most sensitive people are the are meanest, the meanest yes. people. Because I'm so told all the time, even when I think I'm being nice, I'm mean. I am make me as an adult be like you know what oh i'm gonna blow this podcast oh i'm gonna get in these projects you know so I just like yeah put yourself in put yourself in your childlike mindset and just see what comes out all right so we're gonna go ahead and conclude this particular episode with the black shift group i want to go ahead and thank the ladies that came and supported me go ahead and drop a dime on y'all y'all already know y'all can hit me on the black shift group at gmail.com for any ladies that are interested in the yanni scene and any men that want to put their old girl on let me know i will go ahead and ship if you're local but if you're out of state you will have to pay for shipping 
Um, of course, y'all can stream us on Podbean, Google Play, as well as SoundCloud. And you guys already know I am available on YouTube. Our social medias are going to be Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. Um, and I'm actually going to go back around so the ladies can give their name and give any additional information or ending uh, thoughts that they want to go ahead and end. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Once again, I am Kiana Chantel. Instagram, Kiana underscore Chantel. Facebook, Kiana Chantel. Um, KianaChantel.com is under construction. Um, YouTube, Kiana Chantel. All of that. Yes. I know. Snap it up. Snap it up. Snap it up. Um, yeah, you guys, I have so much fun. Thank you so much for having me, Larisha. Absolutely. Um, it's Kendra, Kendra Renee. I'm real lame, so I don't be on that too often, but it's Kendra underscore Ken underscore K. Okay. But again, I appreciate you having me. I had so much fun. It was good talking with you ladies. Wonderful. Yeah. I'll be back. And then this is Kaylin, AKA K Bay. Okay. Y'all can um, definitely follow me on Instagram at it's underscore K Bay. That's K A Y B A Y. If y'all need any bartenders, y'all can hit me up also. And then last but not least, I am Brianna Roberts. You can follow me on Facebook at Brianna Roberts. Instagram and Snapchat is Brianna RW. Ladies, I sell swimwear. Please go look. So for the listeners, go ahead and head over to our YouTube page, The Black Shift Group, and check out the vlog for this episode. Thank you guys so much.